Behind me, on that side there, you will have seen a yew tree. A yew tree is the symbol of the town of Rush, because its name in Irish is Rosseo, or the promontory of the yew trees. At one time, all of this area was covered in yew trees. Why, I don't know, but it was. Just behind me here, this wall is the gable end of the original church of St. Maur. This was erected about uh, 700 years ago, by a, a group of uh, uh, French sailors who uh, were lost in a storm and they were in danger of dying because uh, the waves were so high and the boat was so rocky that they thought they were going to drown. So they, there's their patron saint and the patron saint of drowning people in fact is called Saint Maur. He was a Benedictine monk and they got down on their knees and they prayed and they said, Sauve nous, which is, of course is French for save us. And they made a vow. And the vow was that if they were saved from the storm, that they would erect a chapel on the site where they came to land. Now, they had left France heading for England, but they didn't know where they would end up, if anywhere at all. And after three days, the storm abated and they came ashore over in Rogers Town Estuary, over on this side here. So they came up here to this hill, which is the nearest point to Rogers Town Estuary that has solid ground. And they erected a small wooden church on this spot. Um, they of course did not erect this actual wall. This has been done by stonemasons, and sailors are not renowned for their masonry. In Rush, uh, there is less um, frost than anywhere else in Ireland, an average of maybe two days a year, and we are the second sunniest place in Ireland after Wexford, and we're also the driest place in Ireland. You wouldn't think so from the weather we've been having recently, but um, there's less rain in Rush than anywhere else in Ireland, and more sun than anywhere except Wexford. So we have a lot of sun, a lot of sunshine, a lot of rain, uh, sorry, not much rain, a lot of sunshine, and uh, a, a, a rich loamy sandy clay soil which is the best soil in Ireland it's the most fertile soil in Ireland and that's the reason why in Rush we have a horticultural um, uh, industry and where most of Ireland's uh, vegetables are grown. This yoke here, this uh, gable end of the wall uh, as I mentioned previously is mostly made up of, of limestone mixed in are the odd bits of stones like quartz I've got a piece down here you can't see of Triassic red sandstone and these things here if they were found in the Rush area um, would have been brought here from very far away during the Ice Age and the Ice Age lasted for about uh, two million years and uh, we've only just come to the end of it it finished between nine and ten thousand years ago the last of the ice melted over Ireland it, there was a, an ice sheet two kilometers thick so Ireland in those days was basically in the same condition that Greenland is now. This ice melted very quickly over a period of a few hundred years. Most of the stones here are limestone. This one here is different as you can see it's a nice orangey colour. It's Triassic sandstone probably brought here in one of the glaciers when it was flowing over Ireland. Um, this part of the church here is the east window and the altar would have been in this part here. Churches normally are built in an east-west direction and you will have noticed that the graves also point east to west. There's a reason for this. Um, you may have heard about a book by John McGahan called That They May Face the Rising Sun. This refers to the fact that when someone is buried, or certainly up until recently anyway, when they were buried they were buried with their feet facing um, east so that on the last day of the resurrection when Jesus w appeared out of the, the, the rising sun they would be come up 
and they would be able to see him instead of having their back to him, which would not, wouldn't be very polite, of course. So all of the people in this graveyard have their feet facing towards the rising sun. Or should have, anyway. White's Town House, which is the local sort of gentry house down the road here, where the mill is, the people before them were called Rickards. They were millers, they ran the mill, the water mill there, all the way through the 18th, 19th century. Uh, the mill was supposed to have been a headquarters for smugglers. There's, a, there's a, a, a window at the top of the mill looking out across Rogerstown Estuary from where they were able to look for the revenue men who used to come from that direction. I'm standing now at the front gate leading to Kinua House. Kinua House was one of the most um, let's say important houses in Ireland at one time. It was built in 1826 by a family called Palmer and it was built in the Palladian style which means that the front of the house had columns outside it something like uh, Gracelands you, you know Elvis and Gracelands similar to that but a slightly more upmarket version of Gracelands this gate here, which is made by people called Murphy of 15 Church Street, Dublin. This is where this was actually made in the foundry of a man called Murphy in, in Church Street in Dublin. is made of cast iron. When uh, the last person of the Palmer family to live there was a man called uh, Fenwick Palmer and he uh, left the place in 1964 and in 1964 all of the furniture in Kinyo House was auctioned off and the house was closed up and uh, the windows boarded up. I'm now inside the main gate of the Palmer Estate. This beautiful avenue actually leads nowhere now. It leads simply to an estate of houses. At one time it swept all the way into the beautiful Palladian residence of Kinyo House. Now, Kinyua House was not the first house to be built on this spot. The first one was called Rush House and it belonged to people called Ecklins. And the Ecklins were a, an old uh, landed gentry family. And one of the Ecklins is supposed to have married a Palmer and that is how the Palmers came to be involved here. The Palmers are, were originally from County Mayo and they had a, a large house there with columns at the front, these uh, Palladian columns, and um, when they built Kinyua House in 1826, they removed the columns from the house in Mayo and brought them on horse and cart, about 130 miles from Mayo to here, and erected them in front of Kinyua House. Since then, of course, the house has been demolished and the only part still left now are these columns which originally were an addition to the house they were put on the house from another house so they originally started off life in Mayo I'm standing now in Kinyua churchyard in Rush uh, Kinyua is another version of Rossio Kionyua, the headland of the yew trees so Rush actually has two names in Irish uh, the gravestone on my hand is resting on belongs to a man called Jack Connors who died on the 16th of June 1772 of a brain hemorrhage. He was better known as Jack the Bachelor. He was known, uh, called Jack the Bachelor because even though he had many lady friends and a family as well, he never went through the, uh, a form of marriage with any of these people. Um, but of course, this wasn't the only reason he was famous. There's a lot of people get up to that. And he used to sail across to the Isle of Man, across the Irish Sea over there, and get uh, tobacco, uh, alcohol, and various goods that uh, were highly taxed here. And he used to bring them into Rogerstown Estuary, into the harbour there. And from there, they were distributed all over the, the area of North County Dublin. He became a rich man and he built a magnificent house which still exists. It's on the main street in Rush. 
and it's a thatched house, a two-storey thatched house, one of the very few that still exist in Ireland. Uh, this man was a, a sort of a Robin Hood figure. He used to, to uh, uh, give pe money to poor people and people in need. And for this reason, the people in the town used to cover up for him and they used to, he used to hide in their houses when the revenue men came looking for him. In those days, of course, um, they, they were very, very rich people, the haves, and the poor people, the have-nots. And he was one of the men who tried to square the things and make things a little bit more equal for the poor people. And for that reason, he's known in, in, in Rush and remembered fondly as one of the most famous forebears. That's Jack Connors or Jack the Bachelor. This here, this stone in Cudior graveyard, um, appears to be very old indeed. Um, and it's, it appears to have been homemade, chiseled out by the relatives of the man who died. The name on it is John Ryan, died something 14th day of February in the year of our Lord, 1713. Luke Ryan was what nowadays we would call a pirate. Uh, in, the, in those days they used to call them privateers. Now a privateer was a, a pirate who was licensed by the government to rob other ships once they weren't British ships. So he, was, he could attack French and Spanish ships with impunity because they were sort of always on and off war with the British and steal their goods. And this fellow, Luke Ryan, uh, who came from this area here, from the Loch Shinney area, uh, used, to, used to attack ships all along the Irish Sea and in the North Sea. Um, and in common with many of the people today with their Ansbacher accounts, he had his own special little Ansbacher account, except he had it in uh, the town of Roscoff in Brittany. And strangely, Roscoff is almost... Uh, <clears throat> like a twin of Roche in so far as it's the place where most of the vegetables in France are grown. It's a market gardening area just like Roche. Whether this is the reason he was attracted to Roscoff, I don't know. But he put all his money in the bank in Roscoff. In those days, of course, you didn't deal with pound notes. There was no printed money. It was all gold pieces. When Luke Ryan was finally captured and uh, died, I, can't remember, I don't think he was executed but I know that uh, the government was trying to get his, its hands on his money. They never did and he died leaving ten thousand pounds or guineas which in today's money is something worth like 50 million euros in the bank in Roscoff. That money is still in the bank in Roscoff gaining interest all the time. So if you happen to be a, a, a relative of this man Luke Ryan or you believe you are closely related to him, it's possible you have a chance. You nip into Roscoff next time into the bank there and ask them could you have a look in the account and maybe if there's anything for yourself you, you, might, you might get lucky. My this hand. church here is the Church of St. Adam Nam. It's in, situated in Kinyo Churchyard and it's named after a saint called, called Adam Nam which is a rather unusual name. Uh, I've never met anybody called Adam Nam except for this saint. This church here was built by him in the year around about um, 550, 560. So it was the mid 6th century. It's by far the oldest building in Rush. Much older than the, the, the one uh, at uh, Whitestown, which was only built 700 years ago by the French mariners. Um, we're inside the old church of St. Adam Nan at Canua. This tomb itself is built where the altar would have been, the east facing window again, same as in the other church. And the most famous of the modern day Palmers, who I'm not quite sure whether or not he's buried here, I don't think so, because he died in 1910, was a man called Roger Palmer. And Sir Roger Palmer was um, uh, a very military minded man, and he joined the uh, a thing called the, the Light Brigade or the Light Cavalry and uh, he went off to the Crimean War in the 1850s and at the Battle of Balaclava his unit 
the light brigade was the one that was chosen, 600 of them, to ride into the valley of death at Balaclava and attack the Russian guns. Uh, this was like a suicidal uh, mission. Uh, everybody knew it was suicidal, but because the uh, order had been given by a man called uh, Lord Raglan, they had to do it. Uh, you've probably heard of Raglan Road. Raglan Road was named after this man. But well, around all that area of Dublin, they're named after the people who lived at that time. Wellington Road, Raglan Road, and so on. This t tomb here, which is the best preserved tomb in this church, is of a man called Hamilton, of the famous Hamilton family, who were landowners in this area, Balbriggan, Rush, Skerries. Their coat of arms is on the top of the stone, and he died in the 14th of April, 1668. Now, that 1668 was in the time of Charles II, King of England, two years after the Great Fire of London, when London was destroyed by fire. This man died. Um, he was also known as the Baron of Straban, and Straban, as you know, is in Tyrone, so he obviously owned Straban at that time as well. This here is one of the best preserved stones in Kinure Churchyard. The reason it's so well preserved is because of the, work, the wall which has uh, protected it from the prevailing winds. It's, a lime, it's made of limestone and it's erected uh, as a memorial to Elizabeth Teeling, who died in 1747. Notice something strange about this stone. At first sight, it's possible you might think that it's sandstone. It isn't, it's actually limestone. The reason why it is this colour is because a lot of the limestone in Ireland contains um, uh, iron ore and this iron ore weeps and so you get rust coming out of the, the stone and the rust runs down and colours it a rusty colour. So the reason that is rusty coloured is because of the iron ore inside it. Often you will see a stream and it, there's like orangey water in it. It isn't uh, sewage, it's actually uh, rust.